Hello. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Sailing Evla, right here in Va Varsnes or something. We are on a ferry and today's trip, we are going to go to Flom and we're going to take the train ride. It's going to be awesome. Now the place we are going to, the Flom ride, it is not a carnival act. It's more like a train ride up in the mountains. It's quite steep and it's really beautiful. But before we get to Flom, we also have to cross a mountain. So we're going to go up in the mountains and that's why I gotta have something to eat. Now this place here is a small little place called Vik. And just behind me, over there, is the mountain we're gonna cross. And as you can see, if you can see it on this film, there are a lot of snow up there. But it's kind of a warm day, sunny day. So even though we have snow up there, the roads should be dry because we only have like summer tires on the car. Then we are pretty much halfway up. And I'm gonna show you how it looks. We are in something called Store Swingen, which is... <laughs> <laughs> which is the big turn and it is quite big and yeah I'm gonna show you the view here so this my friends are halfway up we are gonna go where it's still winter <laughs> I think some of the places up there never loses its uh, snow at all down there is Vik and the mighty Sognefjord I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous episode or anything, but this here is a prime example of uh, how people used to actually live. That the, the fact that you have a community or a small village in places like this, because this were the only place you had fruitful soil. So people, uh, now we're talking thousands of years ago, people started living in places like this, in the valleys, in the fjords. Because then you had access to the to the sea, you could fish, but you could also do uh, agriculture in land. And you were pretty much protected by the mountains around you. Most of these valleys here in Norway are populated. Some may be not as populated anymore, but still most valleys or if not all valleys in Norway has or have uh, people living in them. But it's, it's really weird, you know, as long as you have a little piece of soil, people will build a house there and try to live, or at least they used to. Eighteen wheels on fire, rolling down those long dusty roads. His whoppers, their companion, your engine and the diesel you're on. Now we are going down the mountain again on the other side. And uh, well, since the mountains are quite steep, I'm guessing the decline is also steep. This here is the road <laughs> which we're gonna go down. And then we're just gonna follow the valley all the way down there looking for the rub your soul if you're driving man you know his name for the rest of you he waits on down the road we are down at the very valley bottom and this is of course a prime example of a freeway this road was actually built just last year just kidding just kidding but we have a lot of these uh, mountain passes and small tiny uh, cramped roads which are actually kind of cool and fun to drive just check out the valley So here we are in Flom and we have just bought our tickets. Flom, uh, 
was actually finished in 1940. It took 16 years to build this stretch. It's only 20 kilometers long and it takes an hour up and it takes an hour down. Now, the reason why it took so long to, to build a, a train track in this uh, place is of course due to the mountains. There are a steep climb on this train ride and uh, well, it's gonna be cool to see. And now we're gonna ride it. Elizabeth and I with uh, I'm thinking today Elizabeth and I are probably the only Norwegians on this train <laughs> because this here is a really big tourist attraction they have this massive cruise ships that comes in here to Flom then we are on our way, Elizabeth. Yeah, finally. Yeah. On behalf of the train staff, I would like to welcome you on board the Flom Railway. We will be minutes. traveling from Flom on the shore of the Aurumsfjord up to Myrdal Station and the Bergen Railway, 866 meters above sea level. The Flom Railway is 20 kilometers long and our journey will take about one hour. The steepest climb on the Flom Railway is 1 to 18. And I'm guessing a train is on its way down or something. So we're gonna stay here for a couple of minutes. Imagine living down there. You have your whole the whole valley for yourself. pour assurer aux passagers sûrement ouverte au trafic en 1940 avec de petites locomotives à vapeur. En 1944, la ligne a enfin... hamburger. French fries. <laughs> I think this is that. Thank you. The platform may be slippery. Next stop for the huge costume. Now, maybe. This is the place I should do my little uh, waterfall washing again this year. For all you haters out there, I haven't forgotten. Oh, just kidding. Take this water, maybe a tiny bit colder than the waterfall uh, last year. Kind of cool though. And the train just stops here, like so, and it goes on.
I guess. We are on the mountain, I guess. Second time today. Uh, this railway was a genuine railway. It was built, you know, to, to bring goods and people up from the fjord to rendezvous with uh, the rendezvous with the uh, with, uh, national uh, train back in Spain. But today it's mainly used for tourists. So this is the end station at the Myrdal, 800 and something uh, above sea level. And here is the Bergen bond over there, which you could transfer to go to Bergen or uh, uh, even Oslo and so on. This is a part of the national railway system. And Elizabeth wants to change sides. Yeah. Because she thinks it's nicer on this side. But it was, it was. Kind of cool houses though. Really cool houses. And then we were leaving Mudal, going down. And it's a good idea to not have your hand far out from the train set. Now she's hitting me again. That's the thing about Elizabeth. She loves hitting my ass. I don't know why. Stop. She's tapping my ass. Chevy doesn't like it. <laughs> Chevy doesn't like it? No. <laughs> yeah. This, my friends, is actually Nærøy Fjorden. It's a fjord that is um, on the World Heritage List with uh, UNESCO. And uh, we are on a small little path that goes there. As you can see, it goes down to the valley. And it continues up to the mountains above us. Now, these little pathway were actually in use, well, not that long ago. So down here, you don't have too much of that fruitful soil to grow things. Uh, so you had to have your farm animals up there in the mountains during the summer so they could eat of the grass up there. Now, this pathway were the pathway they took. They brought up uh, food, supplies, uh, everything and the animals Way up to the top there. Uh, we are not going to do that. Now, so they brought them up there and uh, you spent the whole summer up there working with animals and stuff and then you brought down the goods milk and cheese and all kinds of things it certainly is beautiful and here we are right here in Nærøy Fjordal actually and it's such a beautiful place we just went up uh, this uh, Rimstigen I think it's called and this is just a narrow pathway up to the mountains uh, above yeah which these people that lived here a long time ago actually used to bring food and supplies up to the mountains where they have their uh, sex industry I fuck it. <laughs>